Yeah. 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 Do you guys want to start? Do you want me to start? Who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so that was Scythe, uh, a game that's been out for a while from Jamie Stegmeier and Friends. Stonemeyer Games. Stonemeyer Games. Jamie Stegmeier and Friends. And so, uh, impressions, what are you guys' thoughts? We've played this a couple times now, as the mm -hmm. three of us. Um, mm -hmm. Eric and I played it another time with a friend who backed it, but what were you guys' thoughts initially? I would say it's it's somewhat misleading from the box art, right? But it, I mean, in all honesty, right? You're smiling, but I mean... Right? Because you see mechs, right? Mm -hmm. You think that it's going to be like, oh, there's going to be like this giant tech tree, I'm going to be able to upgrade my mech, add different kinds of armor, add different kinds of weaponry. That's not really what it is, right? It's a worker placement game with agricultural undertones, and then there's also mechs that you can use to mess with other players. But that's very limited. It's very Euro, and I like it, is the thing, right? No? I'd say it's more area control backed by worker placement. I would agree. I would say this is like the odd hybrid between Amera Euro. I would agree it's, with it's that. It's a colony. I would absolutely agree with that, but the thing is, by the box art is what I'm saying. People are okay. like, oh my gosh, there's Max, and I, I get to attack people yeah. and take I mean, things over. It's I, like, I never made that presumption. Really? There's no that. dice no. rolling. You know, it's based on cards and then how much power you have, yeah. and you're losing power every time you, you know, win a battle or whatever, assuming you use yeah. it that way. It seemed to me to be more Eurocentric than I think most people were expecting it to be, but that's why I like it. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of, well, what's, what's my opponent, what are my opponents trying to do, right? What upgrades are they going for? Or are they not even going for upgrades? Yeah. They're going for more mechs, more buildings. The buildings are kind of lame, in my opinion, in this game. No, in all honesty, right? It very much is like the successor to Viticulture. Viticulture had just about these same buildings. Exact same windmill. Kinda, yeah. The exact same windmill. We gave Jamie Stegmaier a hard time about that. You'll have to watch the interview. But I like it is the thing. Mm -hmm. It's just an interesting hybrid between a, a thematic and then kind of a Euro strategic game. And that's why I like it. Originally I was worried that it was going to be too uh, area control. Because there mm -hmm. are games that are very area control centric and I don't really like them. They end up being more war games. Alright, mm -hmm. you, you roll dice, I'll roll dice. Who who rolls more dice? I do, because I have three more mechs there. Like it's not You're that. explaining a great game. I want to play that game. Right I'm now. explaining Risk, basically. <laughs> Uh, Risk 2010 AD, I believe, is the... 2010? 3010. No one cares. It, oh. <laughs> anyway, I'll shut up now. That's my opinion. I like it how it is. Some people yeah. say it's not thematic enough or not enough Amerithrash. What, what are your thoughts? Uh, um, I think from what we were saying earlier, I, we think it's more of a, an area control backed by the worker placement. Uh, mainly because you have to control the area in order for your air workers mm -hmm. to be able to uh, be fully used. So, as the person who won the game, how did I manage my area control? Very well. Very limited. <laughs> I didn't. It was worker placement, man. And discovery. But anyway, I'll let you guys continue. Well, you didn't use your workers, that's the thing. I did. I had them all the way across harvesting the resources that I wanted. Well, right. So your area control, I mean, you've already got... You, you would have had five possibly six at the end had I not attacked. Fair enough. So, I mean, there there is an area control being that the less area you control, the, le the less amount of production or mm -hmm. uh, anything that you will receive out of that. Sure. So, um, uh, at, at which point, like, say I ended up, like, putting <laughs> my mechs here, you're almost essentially cut off from one area to... Sure, but Jamie did an interesting thing in this game where he actually oh, yeah. marginalized that tactic. He actually hurts you for attacking other players. Each right. time mm -hmm. you attack me with workers, you're losing, you know, uh, hearts, which effectively right. reduces your score. Yeah. Right. True. And, and so, I mean, it, it's less po point to, uh, like, camp in... And I don't think I could have actually landed where anywhere on your like home area, but I could have severely cut off. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but that being said, like the more area you control, the the higher potential score you will receive. Sure. Um, and, and the max, yeah. There's not a lot of dice. There's no dice rolling or anything. It's uh, your combat power plus cards. 
uh, that kind of thing. But the mechs don't really do much outside of aid battle and then unlock certain abilities, which mm -hmm. and move workers. Oh, yeah, and move workers and resources. Efficiently, so, yeah. yeah. Sure so uh, I think for me, it's still much more of an area control, and I mean. Uh, like, I'm still a huge Euro fan, and I, I love this hybrid. This is uh, right alongside because it is a little more Euro than it is Ameritrash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the theme is there, but uh, I think there's a much more strategy and in, in point gaining mm -hmm. than there is a uh, deep theme. Mm -hmm. Brian, you've been oddly silent. What's what's your opinion? Yeah, so I, I really enjoy this game. Eric. Almost every time we play it, like immediately, I want to play it again. Mm -hmm. um, we played at a convention with a guy that kind of ruined it, um, <laughs> so don't play with that guy. Just don't. Uh, but that it, guy's at home right now, just been like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I played with you, and yeah, you didn't tell us anything that would have helped us win. Um, <laughs> but I, t to Eric's point with area control, so starting at your bases, they're fairly balanced, but like. Eric could not get wood for the longest time because the areas available weren't there. Generally, the way Abbey Worker control is everyone has equal opportunity for every resource. Whereas here, that's not necessarily the case. Based on where you start, you can have different resources to your benefit or detriment. Again, I think it's balanced. I, th I think they did that well. It's just how do you play the game? At the end, we are pointing out, had I have had... So, like, Eric and Sean had one more turn than I did because the way we interpreted the rules, and maybe we were wrong, but the way we interpreted the rules is once you trigger end game, it's done. Um, so I did not have a chance to take that last turn. If I did, through area control, I would have gotten 18 to 20 more points, solely based on taking new hexes. Um, so there's area so placement. Area, so area, area control, control means you're defending it. Yes. And you that's, wouldn't really be defending it, you're just placing Because it's end game, out. correct. Because it's end game. But where I, I, I wanted to wait until my last turn to do that, mm -hmm. Because it'd be really easy for someone else to come in and get rid of those workers. Sure. I just didn't get that last turn. Um, and so it's just poorly timed and bad choices on my part. And so I think, you know, that would have been an, a majority of my points would have come from area control. Sure. To your credit, a third of your points came from area control. I guess that's not to your credit, that's to our credit. Um, <laughs> and so just the idea that, you know, area control may not be one of the main mechanics, but it's one of the main deciding factors in victory. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And then you control areas depending upon what resources you want. So I went and heavily fortified the food. Once I got enough food, I was like, I don't need to protect this anymore. I can go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's an odd hybrid between area control and worker placement that works amazingly. I love Ameritrash games, however, and I would have liked to see more upgrade tech trees. I think that would have been really mm -hmm. cool, but I think that would have convoluted the game. I don't think it would have worked well with this game, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. But I think Jamie could make another similar game. Sure. To counter your initial point with the box, when I saw the box, I didn't expect a heavy Ameritrash game, because I saw the Stonemaier Games logo. Yeah. <laughs> and that logo counteracted the artwork in my mind. I'm like, oh, Viticulture, Euphoria. Like, I know the games that they make to know it's not going to be a heavy Ameritrash. Sure. That being said, the art is amazing, and you can buy prints inspired by this game that are really cool from mm -hmm. Bullish Artist. But yeah, any, any final thoughts? So Eric didn't actually say whether he liked the game. He oh, no. said it was area control. I love the game, Did by you? the way. Okay, <laughs> yes. all right. <laughs> yeah. So in it fact, makes sense why it's in the BGG Top 10, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, lately, yeah. Oh, lately yeah. it's gotten a lot of backlash. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, I hate that game. And again, I think it's because... They see what's on the carton, right? Mm -hmm. And they're expecting a delicious, meaty Ameritrash game, and it's not that. I, I think it's twofold. It, it, it is a little so bit, I think but it's, it's not... I think it's Ameritrashers are expecting an Ameritrash game. Yeah. And Euro players are expecting Viticulture 2.0. And it's, Could be. it's too thematic yes. for them. Yeah, and it's then a hybrid. It's, and then it's too fiddly for those Ameritrashers. Yeah. And so it's... It, it's polarizing the people, mm -hmm. and so I think that's why there's the backlash. And we kind of talked to to Jamie about the whole Kickstarter debacle. Oh yeah. Um, and I think that also factored into things. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I don't know the exact numbers, but it's something like 99% of these copies were delivered like a month in advance, mm -hmm. and 1% were delivered like two months late. Sure. Just gone down in history as the game that shipped late. Yeah. Like most and people got it so like two months early. Yeah. And yeah. he worked so hard to like yeah. make sure it was done right. And yeah. 
distributors and whatever. Yeah. And, and, and so, so I think that's some of the backlash. I think a lot of the backlash is undeserved, or it's oh, from no, player so misconception. So. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I have friends that love Ameritrash games that would hate this game. I have friends that love Euros that would hate this game. But most of the people we play with enjoy games for the game and they enjoy things. Thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some gamers that don't like a lot of conflict, mm -hmm. right? Which mm -hmm. we, we played it with one of those guys. Rado. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, I guess I don't really like conflict either. I don't really like area control, which is why I didn't do it. Yeah. And so that, instead I focused on economics yeah. and discovery, which yeah. those are my two favorite things in yeah. games. And like which the, this game has in spades. Yeah. And the three of us are much less conflict-based. Sure. Uh, other people I've played this with, one of our friends, he's much more open to conflict, and I'm much more open to conflict. So the two of us were kind of going at war. Sure. Which helped us, and also hurt us. Because yep. then the other two guys are just kind of profiting off of yeah. this right. player agreement kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you all kind of need to be on the same level, or someone will benefit. If only one person's aggressive, they have the advantage. If two people are aggressive and they don't want to offend their non-aggressive friend, now that mm -hmm. guy has the advantage. Sure. So. Yep. Which was what I was actually taking advantage of at yeah. the end there. Well, and it held like you were really far away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, there was one point we almost had conflict up here because I was trying to surround this lake. Yep. Um, and I saw it wasn't worth it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and I other, switched yeah. gears. And, and other than that, I'm like, there's no resources that Sean has that I need. Hindsight, I should have just taken them from him so he couldn't have. I honestly thought you were going to attack my mech up here to get mm -hmm. another star up there. Which I was highly debating. Okay. Um, and then I moved him back yeah. in my... And I didn't board. realize you didn't have cards, and I had all twos. Yeah. And so I'm like, I have no good cards. He he will probably yeah. beat me. Until you, I had asked, I thought you had cards. And I was yeah. like, all right, well, I guess I'll pull out the big gut. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. so, so that was just poor observation on our part. Yeah. Yeah, I only started with one card, and then I used it here to beat you. Which yeah. I didn't need to, I guess. Yep. But, yeah. yeah. All in all, it's a great game. I mm -hmm. recommend it. Uh, I, like we said, though, go in knowing what it is. Don't expect a heavy Euro, don't expect a heavy Meritrash, expect an amazing hybrid. Yeah. I would agree. Alright. Well, this was Scythe from Stonemeyer Games, or Stegmeyer and Friends, as I will now call them. Uh, I'm still waiting on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> Alright, well, thanks for watching, and tune in next time. Alright. That being said, I still love you, Jamie. <laughs>